Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. We're back in black with some awesome pedals. We certainly are. Uh, you guys might remember a couple of years ago, Rob and I started shooting videos uh, from a, a guy in America who was making pedals called Rockbox Pedals. And they were all hand painted and swirly and very funky and made in fairly small runs. And as a result of that, were quite expensive. So he spent the last couple of years um, working out how he can make the same sounding pedals into uh, a design that he can make more quickly and therefore sell to you more affordably. These are absolutely stunning looking pedalis. Uh, myself and Rabir were both dribbling over them earlier. We love the fact that they've got these kind of nice curvy edges, the paint jobs are very nice. One of the things I like most about these over the original hand painted ones is... Um, it tells he, you what they do. It tells you what they do. The hand painted <laughs> ones never that. told you what they did. <laughs> so anyway, there are three pedals currently in the range with more coming. Uh, we have the Red Dog, which you can't see down here, but you will do in a minute, which is the simplest of the drive pedals. The Boiling Point, which is probably the hottest Ooh. of the pedals. And the Baby Blues, which as its name suggests, is a blues pedal. So, so no longer with a swirly... You can uni. still buy them if you want to oh, okay. with a swirly, but you pay about 70 or 80 pounds more just for a swirly paint job. Yeah. This is what it sounds like clean through Rob's wondrous silverback. Uh, if you look like I'm on the phone, I'm not on the phone. I'm just simply using the exceptionally high quality video camera built into this so that you can see close up stuff. Oh, make sure that when you film though, you film with it sideways. Friends don't let friends film the other way around. Okay. So this is the Red Dog. You can see it's kind of the simplest one in the range. It simply has a level and a drive control. And you can kind of use this in two basic ways. With the drive all the way off, like we have it now, you can kind of use it as like one of those sort of EP boost always on type pedals. Uh -huh. So this is what it sounds like with the drive. So as I'm playing a riff, Captain is going to increase the gain on the red dog. I certainly am. And you'll hear the difference in the gain stage R's. So on its minimum mode, you should see as well, the level control is roughly at unity when it's sort of about nine o'clock. So there's tons and tons of just pure clean boost if that's all you want the pedal to do. Uh, we're using it as, as more of a just a conventional drive here. So this is it, uh, well, this is it without, hang on. Oh, I should just say as well, love the silent switching. Because uh... it's not it's not a ka-chink, ka-chink, it's just a, don't make any noise, don't make any noise. <laughs> so here, here's without. Just, um, and what of course you can also do, if you've just got a, like a, a vintage amplifier with a bit of mild crunch on it, so if we can just crunch the silver back up just like a, a minuscule amount, like this, uh, let's turn this off. We can of course use the uh, Red Dog to just use it as a sort of slight boost. Like. Yeah, it sounds really good. So it's, it's versatile pedal, the Red Dog. Uh, true bypass, uh, sort of USA made, premium components, good quality stuff. Moving on, what's next, Captain? Okay, do you want to do the boiling point I next? I think we should do the boiling point. Okay, boiling, the boiling, the boiling point is um, a higher gain pedal. 
Uh, originally, this this won, the original version of this won like a Pro Guitar Shop Pedal of the Year uh, sort of shootout from about two or three years ago. Which probably is quite a prestigious award because they review some oh, pedals. Like every pedal ever. Yeah. Um, that was how I first sort of found out about them. This uh, has got a couple of dip switches on it. The first thing that it has is, so you've got your conventional level drive and tone. I'll do a close up of this in a minute. Um, Bass boost, they describe as a feature that you might want to use to add bass to a single coil pickup. So if you've got a single coil guitar and the bridge pickup just sounds too weedy, you can hit the boost in and it'll kind of humbucker it up a bit, I suppose. And then the, the other one, the clip boost, is, is like a drive circuit selector. So in the middle position, it just works more like a clean boost. And then in the up and down positions, it just has like a different tonal characteristic. Um, it's quite vintage. Well, you know, it's 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 got a lot of stuff, but I think it's probably you know it's martially. So let's go back to a clean tone on here, uh, if we may, um, and then I'll go back over to handy camming. But here's a sound. Here's a clean sound. Oh my God! It's got to be like thumb printed something amazing so we're on handy cam here is the close-up you can see this is a sexy kind of metallic green pedal so clean sound is as is so the drive is notched again, so I'm just going to gradually bring in the drive as we go. And I've got the bass boost off because Robbie's using a humbucker guitar. Here we go. That's all of that. Yeah, and it's got, um, I'll just click through the three modes of, uh, of drive, because they sound quite different. So you want, you're on the back humbucker, aren't you? Yeah, if I just go. That's a lot louder. Yeah. What's, the, what's the other one? Uh, so that's, this is the top one. And then the middle one does seem a bit loud. Is. Singing sound though, isn't it? Yeah. Just try, I'll put the bass boost on, use the back humbucker and I'll put the bass. That's what we had originally, remember this? That's... <laughs> Boiling point always winning the points with me. Okay, cool. So uh, now I'm going to go over to the final one. Okay, so Baby Blues. Here we go. Baby Blues actually has a ton of dip switches on it now. I mean, it's uh, is it overcomplicated? I don't know. Is I it guess option paralysis? We'll possibly. find out. Possibly. So you've got your standard level drive and tone controls, but then what you've got is you've got a couple of switches that control... Uh, whether or not the pedal acts as more like a conventional boost or more like a treble boost. And then you've got another couple of switches on the right-hand side that, that um, uh, give you different types of drive 
shapes, if you like. So uh-huh. it's a, it's a it's a, I mean in total I think it says there are sixteen different kind of settings that if you changed all these dip switches around or and as somebody shouted at me the other day they're not dip switches they're mini toggle switches. If you're the person that shouted at me on Facebook for calling them dip switches, there you see I corrected myself. I do listen. <laughs> um, so let's start with. Uh, I think we'll start with all of the, the toggle switches facing left. Uh, the drive, well, that's interesting. This particular drive one isn't notched, so this is just a free flowing infinite thing. drive options. And I guess as Rob's playing some nice bluesy stuff, I'm just going to fiddle around and see what happens. So, this is what it sounds like clean. <laughs> So with all the switches kind of switched to the right, this is the sort of the maximum drive drive circuit. So you can kind of hear whether it would work as a good. Appropriate for drop D tuning for a pedal called a baby blues. No. You should have done that on the boiling point if you're going to do that. <laughs> Consider yourself reprimanded. That sounds great. It's a good sounding pedal. With, as you say, some people are going to love uh, all the different options, some people are going to go too complicated. And I have a feeling they would all blend very well together. Certainly, they say the red dog sits nicely in front of all these as a sort of just a, a fattener. Like, a, you know, imagine adding an extra sweetener to your coffee. In the well, that is a good marketing ploy, isn't it? This pedal works with everything we do. Yes. So buy it and put it in front of them all. Yeah, I mean, it, I thought they sound great. I mean, I, I, shall, I, shall I stop filming close up? Now? I think you can start doing close up. Um, Which would you have if you were. We were actually talking about doing a little. I am board doing a pedal board, I swear each, on my life. I promise each, I'm doing a pedal So board that we somewhere. have a little one for Anderton's that we bring and we use. And I'm going to put a spark and, yep. uh, you know, some TC stuff on it. Would you take one of these? Yeah, I would. I, I mean, again, I, I'm, I can see myself. I've, I've, I think I've kind of discovered over the last, you know, probably year or two years of doing these videos. That I am a big, I enjoy the compressed nature that a pedal overdrive gives you over, say, perhaps the way a, a tube amp overdrive gives you. So uh-huh. I, I quite enjoy that. So I can see myself ending up with a board that says, right, nice Fender clean amplifier, and then perhaps two or three drive pedals to just give me that tonal sort of yeah. palette. I probably, um, I think the standout one on here probably is still the boiling, boiling point, point, just yeah. because that's the one that does. The sort of the martially kind of gnarl better than a lot of pedals that I've tried. Um, it's quickly becoming one of those go-to pedals like the Ibanez Tube Screamer and yeah. you know the Love um, pedal that you used to use a lot. Yeah, big fan of the Love pedal. Still, still got a lot of time for that. Um, I think, to be honest with you, some people, you know, th- 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 I think it's a really tough thing now buying pedals. You know, so, you've almost got to the point now where you're just going. There's so many good drive pedals on the market. You know, you know that they're all nice and reliable. You can make a decision about true bypass buffered, whatever you want to do. You know, they're not expensive. Um, you know, so you can afford to chop and change if you want to. 
And I think sometimes like aesthetics are going to become almost more and more important, aren't they? Because yeah. you're just going to end up going, there's there's all there's like five, ten different distortion pedals that they yeah. all sound good. So I'm just going to buy the one that, you know, either the layout appeals to you or just the colour or, or something that really or inconsequential. Ten, five years like time, people did stuff iPads on their no, boards, never gonna happen. Never I hope not. Anyway. Yep. But yeah, at some point you'll get to see Captain and I making and designing our own pedal boards in a video for Anderton's Yeah, and they, I hope they'll probably change as time goes by. But yeah. and, and that's to be honest with you, that's really all our customers do. You know, it's like we have customers that every time we see them, they're just in to basically sell an old pedal that they bought to buy a new pedal, and their board changes all the time. So look, and we hope you do the same. This is this is this is the pedals. Look, I shall hold them up for you in full glorious Technicolor. Uh, oh, pardon me. That's what well, standby well, switches well, are for. Oh, the mic. And the microphone. That's it. Just destroy everything. <laughs> um, here they are. Look. I'll hold that one. Why not have all three? All right. What, what country's flag is that? Uh, is there a flag like that? Uh, uh, oh, hang on. No, it isn't. There's definitely. It I'm looks sure like definitely. A, a version of Italy. How many colours are in? What colours are in the Mexican flag? <laughs> I don't know enough about the world. <laughs> Comment below. What flags can I make out of these three boiling point pedals? Um, I've been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. We love you all.